Okay. So in this talk, I'm going to take some examples of rings. And as we go through the examples, I'll also explain whether the examples are integral domains or fields. And if so, why? And if not, why not? So first, I note that the natural numbers don't form a ring. What's wrong with the natural numbers? They're closed under addition. They're closed under multiplication. Yet they don't form a ring. Why not? They don't have additive inverse. They don't have additive inverses. And one part of the ring definition is that addition should uh, should there should be additive inverses. Okay. So the natural numbers are not a ring. What is it? Well, they're not a ring. There's there's something called a ring. The ring without negatives, but uh, well, they remove the end from ring and call it ring. But that that's not relevant. That that that's, that structure is not not direct relevance. Okay, so we have the integers. The integers form a ring. Addition you can invert, right? Multiplication you can do. You cannot invert multiplication, but you can still uh, do multiplication. Now the integers are not just a ring; they are an integral domain. So these are, this is an integral domain. Why is it an integral domain? What does it mean to be an integral domain? There's two ways to define integral domain. One is to say that whenever the product of two things is zero, then at least one of the pieces is zero. And that's true for integers, right? Whenever product of two integers is zero, mm -hmm. one of them is zero. The other way, which is equivalent is, so this is one definition. The other definition is says that whenever AB equals AC, then B equals C. So you can cancel anything multiplicatively. You see why these definitions are equivalent? These two? Yeah. Well, if you start with this latter thing, if you if you assume this first definition and you start with the latter, you just move everything to one side, take A common, okay. and then you get either A equals Z, or I should say A B equals C or A equals zero. Sorry. Okay. Yeah? Yeah. So so if you start with the Sorry. Yeah. So if you start with the latter definition, A B equals A C. Or so if you assume the former definition and then you start with A B equals A C, you manipulate, you get A times B minus C equals zero. So either A equals zero or B minus C equals zero, and B minus C equals zero gives you B equals C. So the first definition implies the second. How does the second imply the first? Well, you just put C equals zero in the second definition and you'll get the first one. Okay. So these are equivalent. Do you understand now what, what's meant by saying the definitions are equivalent? Yeah, well, if and only if, right? Yeah. So one definition, the, the, the notion defined by this definition is the same as the notion defined by this. Okay. So, so the, the integers form an integral domain. Well, actually, that's the way the word integral domain came in. It's like a dom, it's like something which like behaves the like the integers. Yeah. Okay. But, but you, so although you can cancel stuff, Although you can cancel stuff, you cannot invert stuff within the integers. However, if you start intro trying to introduce inverses to things in the integers, what do you get? Rational. rational numbers. And the rational numbers now actually form a field. Here? Mm -hmm. Field means that all non-zero elements can be inverted. Inverted, you mean one over the element? Yeah. Okay. In other words, for every rational number, there's another rational, for every non-zero rational number, there's another rational number whose product with it is 1. Okay? And R and C are also fields. Okay? Mm -hmm. If I, uh, there are, the real numbers actually, the construction is pretty complicated from the rational number. The complex numbers are pretty simple once you have the real numbers to construct. Mm -hmm. uh, but, yeah. Now, there's something interesting I want to say in an aside that an integral domain is, is a, I want to say, so I want to say that any integral domain, you can put it inside a field. How would you do that? If I give you an integral domain, how do you make a big f a field containing it? Well, it's actually the same idea as the construction of the rationals from the integers. Mm -hmm. So given any integral domain, like Z, you can construct a field like Q, which contains it. Okay. So if I, uh, so, so if you start with a field, you can have sub, sub domains of that, which are not fields, right? So you can start with a field and you can go down, take subsets of that, which are just integral domains and not fields, right? Mm -hmm. 
And in fact, every integral domain is a sub sub domain of a field. Okay. How do you prove that? Well, it's actually exactly the same proof as the proof that of the construction of rationals. Mm -hmm. And uh, and moreover, any subring of an integral domain will still be an integral domain. Do you see that? If you have a if you have a ring which is an integral domain, mm -hmm. and you take a subring of that, will that still remain an integral domain? Uh, not immediately obvious. Well, this condition can that be why if that's true in the whole ring, it will still be true in a subring, right? Okay. Whenever a product of two things is zero, mm -hmm. then one of them is zero. That's okay. true for elements in the whole ring. Okay. It's also true in the subring. Mm -hmm. So any subring of an integral domain is an integral domain. So if you want to construct examples of things that are not integral domains. You cannot look inside these, okay? Because okay. any subring of these is going to be an integral domain. Mm -hmm. So where do we look for new rings? Well, do we know how to add anything other than numbers? Calculus. <laughs> you add some. You add stuff in calculus that are not numbers. You mean oh, you mean it's calculus is the study of what? Study of. Functions. Uh -huh. Can you add functions? Add functions. Not, not necessarily. Well, if they are on the same domain. You, you can add. You can add them. How do you add them? Like, how do you define the sum of two functions? F, F. F plus G is the function which sends X to what? Yeah, you're saying it. Send, sending X to Fx plus Gx. Yeah, pointwise addition, right? Mm -hmm. And this is the point free notation where you just say, mm -hmm. you remember? We yeah. saw this in calculus several years ago. Uh -huh. Yeah, I mean several hours ago, sorry. Uh -huh. So, so we say that, so we can, so with this idea, and we can define multiplication of functions, how would you define multiplication? fx dx. Yeah. So this gives us an idea for some exciting examples of rings. What rings can we take? Well, look at, let's say, look at, let me see some examples, some calculus examples. Let's denote by CR all continuous functions on R. How big is this set? It's uncountably infinite. Is that what you're asking? Well, actually, it's it's even worse. It's oh, it's not countable. Well, it's 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 even like it's it's even bigger than R. R is already uncountable. C R oh. is is even bigger. Yeah. Yeah, it's not not countable. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, it's uncountable. That's that's right. But it's it's sort of R is also uncountable. But C R is is like an even bigger size than R. Mm -hmm. Anyway, uh, well, actually, I'm not totally sure of that. Anyway, but, but that's not important. It's infinite, but what's important here is, this is a ring, in what sense? Well, how do I define addition? So I can define addition by this rule. Mm -hmm. How would I show that this addition operation is well defined? As you say, closure. How do you prove closure? What do you need to prove? You need... Or what, what result from, from calculus do you use? The sum of Continuous functions is continuous. continuous. And that tells you that you have closure under addition. Mm -hmm. What else do you need to check? Do you have a zero for is, is addition associate is addition commutative? Yeah. Associative? Yes. Well, because point wise, we are doing everything point wise. So because point wise you have commutativity and associativity. Mm -hmm. You have commutative and associativity for the functions also. Yeah. What about the existence of zero? Zero function. Let me just keep writing as I do this. So addition. As defined here, mm -hmm. closed, mm -hmm. commutative, associative, zero is the zero function. Mm -hmm. Is that continuous? The zero function? Yes. Okay, good. That you have to check that, right? Mm -hmm. And then additive in additive inverses, the negative, negative of f is also continuous, mm -hmm. right? Because when you multiply a continuous function by a scalar, it's it's still continuous. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's good. So we prove proven the axioms related to addition. Mm -hmm. uh, 
multiplication you define a multiplication mm -hmm. like this is it closed under multiplication yes. why the product of two continuous functions is continuous okay now notice we use calculus or calculus type ideas to prove the to prove the the closure here but we won't be using calculus much once we have established that setting. Then we can just use results of rings. Mm -hmm. So the calculus is necessary to get us started to sort of admit this into the family of rings. And then after that, it's not going to come up much. Is it commutative? Because mm -hmm. multiplication of, of real numbers is commutative. Mm -hmm. Associative? Mm -hmm. Does it have a 1? Yes, the 1 function is mm -hmm. the 1. That's it to check, right? So this yeah. is a ring. Oh, we have to check what more? Distributivity. Is that true? Yeah. True because everything is pointwise. Yeah. In fact, you can see that actually the fact that all the operations are pointwise can be used to sort of directly prove almost everything. You don't have to do, like it sort of gives an, a meta proof of everything except closure. Closure, you have to actually think about that using calculus theorems and that these functions are actually still continuous. Mm -hmm. <coughs> but the commutative, associative and distributivity just follow from the pointwise nature. Okay. Great. Now, is CR an integral domain? What What would that mean? What do you want to say? It's a one-to-one function. You say? No. What What do we want to check? We want to check if if you have two functions whose product is zero, does that imply that f is zero or g is zero? So, oh. or is that true? If I have two functions on the real number, so that the product of them is the zero function everywhere on the real numbers, mm -hmm. and they're both continuous functions, mm -hmm. does that imply that one of the functions is zero everywhere? Okay. Is that true or not? I think it's true. It's not true. So can you think of an example where it's not true? Can you think of two uh, functions whose think. product is zero everywhere, but the, but the two functions are not, neither of them is zero everywhere. So I'm, I'm not like one of some of them could like this one could be zero at some places. This one could be zero at some places, but neither of them is zero everywhere. Think piecewise functions, piecewise definitions. Okay. So what, so what you know is that at every point, one of these functions is zero, okay. but you want that at some points, this one is zero and at some points, this one is zero. Okay. So we can just define a function that one function on the on the positive part is zero and negative part is non-zero and the other one is the reverse. Okay, so you can have it. But you have to make sure that it, it remains continuous. Something mm -hmm. like this. Gx is what? Zero well x is greater or equal to zero. X minus x. Okay, so both of these are continuous because at the transition point the left hand limit, right hand limit are equal. Mm -hmm. Now fx gx is zero everywhere mm -hmm. because at every point at least one of the functions is zero mm -hmm. but neither f nor g is zero okay so the answer is no okay great uh it's so cr is not an index so is it a field well if it is not an integral integral domain it's not a field it's not a field great mm -hmm. can it be put inside a field can there be a field which contains this yes what, how would you do that? Well, there cannot be actually, there cannot be a field which contains this because if a field contained this, then that field would be an integral domain, right? Mm -hmm. And any subring of an integral domain is still an integral mm -hmm. domain. Yeah. So this cannot be put inside any field. Okay. Okay, let me take some other one. So let's define C infinity R as all infinitely differentiable functions on R. So these are functions that you can differentiate as many times as you want everywhere. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is this a ring? Yes. Under the same operation. Mm -hmm. Is it a subring of CR? Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. Because CR, any, anything here is also in CR. Right? I mean, A, A self is a ring. Yeah. yeah. 
Now, the hard question, is it an integral domain? I guess it is because you're raising this example. Sorry? I think it is. Why? Because... Well, can this example work to show it's not an integral domain? No, because these functions are not infinitely differentiable. Right? Mm -hmm. What's the problem? Well, this function is not differentiable at zero. Mm -hmm. This function is also not differentiable at zero. Mm -hmm. Can you modify the example to get something in C infinity R? Where you have two functions in C infinity R whose product is zero but neither function is zero. Modify our existing example hmm. to get a what? To get to get situation where f and g are both so to basically get something like this to show that C infinity R is not an integral domain. Um, Actually the answer is oh, yes. C C infinity R is not an integral it's not it's not easy so you can do something like you have to do an example which involves what are called bump functions but you have to do something like involves things like e to the minus one over x squared this is actually related to the fact that you can have things in c infinity r which don't have their own taylor series uh -huh. so you can do something like that but that's a little so again uh, this infinite differentiable function on r is not an integral domain Yes, this is not an integral domain. This is not very. This requires some thinking. It requires some serious calculus. Okay. Okay. But I'll, uh, but let's let's look at something in between. Let's define c k of r. So so uh, let me just say not an integral domain. So you see that these questions, which are purely algebraic questions, can sometimes require you to think about calculus, right? And similarly, there will be questions which look like calculus questions, which you can solve purely algebraically. Okay, let's look at C k of r, where k is a, k is a positive integer. And I define that as all, all functions on r that are at least k times continuously differentiable. Here? Okay, so so now in fact you have these kind of subs. So C R is a ring. C one R, what's C one R? The one time, the one time continuously differentiable functions. That's a subring of C R. Yeah, you see this notation? You're familiar with this? Yeah. This just means this right thing is a subset of this. Mm -hmm. But not just subset, these are actually subrings. C two R is things which are twice continuously differentiable, that'll be smaller than that be possibly fewer than the yeah. one thing. So on. What's the intersection of all these? What's the intersection of all these? Things which are k times differentiable for all k, k times continuously differentiable for all k are what? Uh, C C no, C R is the biggest one. Intersection means the C K, C R K, two K. No, the intersection of all C K. K going from 1 to infinity. It means that they are differentiable f as many times as you want. Okay. What does that mean? What 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 ring is that? This one? Infinitely yeah. I mean, infinitely differentiable just means you can differentiate it as many times as you want, right? The intersection of union. Intersection. Because... Each one, like as you as this k becomes bigger, the ring becomes smaller. Yeah. And you the intersection will basically tell you sort of what elements are there in all of them. Yeah. Oh, so I'm I think I'm not getting the definition of the the the, the notation right. It means C C R one means at least one time. Is it at least one yeah. time? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, uh, sorry, it's just, I thought it's exactly one time. Yeah, I should at least. Okay. Okay, so, okay, so now, now, now it's easier to see. Is C1R an integral domain? Well, can you construct an example like this, like this one for C1R? You show that C1R is not an integral domain? You just have to smooth this to make it once differentiable. Mm -hmm. How do you do that? Just make it uh, a constant. 
No, so so the the issue with this is that your functions look like they're turning suddenly, right? Mm -hmm. Can you make them turn more smoothly to make them once differentiable? What you change, you can change x to x squared. Okay, I uh, the other the other way. So now they are both in C1R, and so this shows you that C1R is not an integral domain. What would you what example could you choose to make to do C2R? X cubed. X cubed, because then the second derivative would, would in fact be a continuous function. Mm -hmm. So this is not an integral domain. What example would you take to to, to do C3R? Okay, so any of the finite ones, so any CKR, you can actually show it's not an integral domain. Mm -hmm. What's not so obvious, the C infinity R on the other hand is much harder. That requires you to do some example of this kind. Okay. So that doesn't follow from these, but these are not integral domains. Mm -hmm. 